Welcome to week six of Principles of Property Management. A couple of housekeeping items for this week. I noticed that some of you are not getting the most bestest grades on the quizzes at the end of the chapters, and I hope you won't grieve about that too much because the quizzes are only 10% of your grade, and those scores will be weighted. So you won't... Um, necessarily see those having a huge impact on your final grade. However, for someone teetering on the brink between grades, it might come in handy to have those few extra points. I encourage you to study the key vocabulary terms at the end of each chapter and also to complete the chapter quiz before you go online and take the quiz for the course because I think that reviewing in that fashion will be helpful to you. I have assignment two started for you, which is evaluation of a property and developing the um, financial reports and cash flow analysis. I don't quite have it ready for you yet, and I apologize. I will get that posted early this week, and I did extend the date that it's due by a few days, so you'll have an additional weekend to work on it. Again, my apologies. I um, I want to give you the best assignment I can give you that will make the most sense and be meaningful, and I need a little more time to get that done and gather some data. By the way, when you're doing these assignments, it's okay to do some outside research. And in fact, it's even encouraged because you will find some things helpful online or some other places that might make sense now that you've been studying some of these things. If you just use the textbook, you might miss out on some other information. I know that um, there's a lot out there, and I certainly don't expect you to spend hours scouring the internet to find every available piece of information, but sometimes it's best not to solely rely on the textbook as the be-all, end-all. Especially this textbook is, um, it's okay, it's good, but I also use some other source materials for preparing these uh, lessons and things and, and for studying up, so you might find that helpful as well. The chapter that we have this week is chapter six, and by the way, next week we will start the skipping around. Uh, this, this week we are uh, still in line, so week six is chapter six. This chapter is about marketing. Not just marketing the property, although that's a huge component, but also marketing your business and yourself if you happen to be going into the property management business rather than just owning a couple of properties to manage for yourself. There are uh, some laws that need to be addressed and um, some procedures for marketing. I will tell you right now, marketing is not my strong suit. I'm sort of more of a numbers and processes person, so I'm really good at organizing things. I'm not so good on the creative side. For all you creative souls out there, here's your chance to shine. Um, your, your assignment three or four, I forget which one it is, is to develop a marketing plan for a property. So. Uh, if, you, if that's your gift, then you will have the opportunity to show us what you got. This chapter is um, it's very kind of general, but talks about some different ways that you can market yourself or your business or a property and what might be the most effective depending on your demographic. A lot of it kind of is common sense, so it's not a lot of, um, of items that, um, terms that you won't be familiar with and that kind of thing. But Maybe we'll have you looking at things in a little bit different way. I do just want to briefly call your attention to two things. I did post in the module links to the Federal Trade Commission websites about the Do Not Call list and the CAN Spam Act. If you're not familiar with Do Not Call, that is an opportunity for you to put your home phone number or cell phone number on the registry so that you will not, in theory, receive solicitation calls. This does not apply to business phone numbers. If you have a cell phone listed as a business phone somewhere, you are fair game. And you will get tons of robocalls. I get them all the time. People wanting to lend me money, sell me security services, etc., etc., because my cell phone number is posted on a list on the Supreme Court website uh, for doing child custody mediation. So they assume that's my business number and they call me at will. With the internet now and the voice over internet phones, you can't tell where they're really coming from, and the Federal Trade Commission is working hard to try to resolve this, but 
If you don't have your number on the do not call list and you don't like being interrupted at dinner time, this might be something helpful for you to read. It's also good to know from a business perspective if you're going to ever make cold calls. You need to understand what this law says. And then the CAN Spam Act also has to do with sending email solicitations and certain requirements for those. I encourage you to read these because later on, uh, when you are doing your marketing plan, one of the things you will be evaluated on is whether your marketing plan and your advertisements comply with these laws. And I want you to understand what those requirements are because the penalties are extremely stringent for failure to comply. For do not call, it's $11,000 fine per phone call. That can add up quickly if you've called 30 people today. And I don't want, to, not that it's likely that you're going to be prosecuted, but you never know if somebody complains about you and they get a few complaints about a particular phone number or person, then they will look into that, just a heads up. And we will also talk more, this chapter touches briefly on fair housing. We will be spending a significant amount of time on fair housing laws starting next week because most of you will end up doing something with residential property management, whether it's your own or for others. And I will say that this is probably one of the areas of the law that is quickly evolving in a number of areas. And it is uh, has the potential to create uh, significant legal liability for you. So we will be spending quite a bit of time on that next week. It's um, almost kind of scary sometimes. Then we will be skipping around in the book a little bit because next week is chapter 14. So be aware of that. And that's about all I have for you this time. So I hope that you will have a nice week. I did put a uh, another video up for you to look at. It is an interview with a property manager here in Boise. I think you'll find it interesting and one of the discussion boards pertains to your reaction to that video. So you will have the opportunity to, uh, to see that and hopefully this one. Thanks, have a great week.